Okay, everybody, um, this one is called a U.S. Citizen is a Corporation, and it could also be titled All Elections are in the District of Columbia. Um, this is extremely important, okay, especially given all the shit that's going on these days. And, you know, um, I always thought we were in a republic, and we're going to talk about that. Um, so I want to talk about my two groups. I got a group, uh, uh, email groups on Google Groups and on freelist.org. And this is my website right here. And I also have subscription channels on uh, HowTo. Okay, this is a fairly new um, uh, thing that I've got. And uh, so um, YouTube has taken my channel down twice. And, um, you know, it could happen again. You know, they want to be sued. But the bottom line is this is going up to YouTube. And, but it'll also be going on my how-to channel. Um, and so, and, but that's a subscription channel and it costs $9.99 a month. And you have, um, uh, you can watch all the videos on there. And then plus uh, you get uh, free unlimited uh, email consultations. Now, uh, I'm not a liar. Well, I'm in a lawyer. No, I'm in a liar. Uh, but I can tell you what to do and under, what, uh, under certain circumstances and where to find the forms. So, uh, anyways, the important thing is, is that this is about the U.S. citizens of corporation. They're assaulting you with the Commerce Clause. You're getting mixed up in the Commerce Clause is what it is. And it's plenary jurisdiction. All elections are in the District of Columbia. And the reason this is so important is because there was a recent court case. This is a Texas suit over election integrity. Texas has not demonstrated a judicially cognizable interest in the manner in which another state conducts its elections. Well, think about that. This was the court wrote in an unsigned ruling on Friday evening, and that's taken from the Texas Tribune, 12 December 2020, which, in other words, Texas did not have standing. Okay, so why did Texas not have standing? Well, think about it. If it's a District of Columbia election... What's Texas got to do with District of Columbia elections? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Anyways, so let's get going here. First of all, I'm not a liar. Well, I'm in a lawyer. No, I'm in a liar. Uh, but I can tell you, uh, um, you should never take my word for anything. You should always do your own research. I've provided references to aid you in your research. But I don't know everything, and I'm open to any ideas. There's four types of people you'll meet in your life. There's the people who try to wake up the slaves. There's the slave masters. There's the people who have no idea they're slaves. And there's the people who like being slaves. Which one are you? Do you really know for sure? Are you who you think you are? If you can see through the illusion, then you are the solution. Everything is an illusion. Things are not what they appear. If the people do not know their basic rights and freedoms, how can they know when or if their rights and freedoms are being infringed? Never forget the men who started this country were marijuana-growing, whiskey-drinking, tax-evading rebels who left their beds at night to shoot at the pigs. And that's what they were. Think about it. Think about it. That's what they were. That's the militias. There's a militia right there. And that was the militias. And uh, um, we need to revitalize the militias. All tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for people of good conscience to remain silent. Government is not reason, it is not eloquence, it is force. Like fire, it's a dangerous servant and a fearful master. So, this is actually taken from uh, 102, 102 Stat 1344, Public Law 100-418, August 23, 1988. This is where they actually admit that uh, a, a U.S. citizen's a corporation. <laughs> but it's, it's all over the place. You just have to learn how to read the codes. Uh, definitions as used in the section term United States business means a United States citizen. Okay, that's a United States business. And then, and then it's a, a corporation, partnership, or other association created under the laws of the United States or of any state, including the District of Columbia, any Commonwealth territory or possession of the United States, or a foreign corporation, partnership, or other association, more than 95% of which is owned by persons described in subparagraphs A or B. And that's in 1988, 23rd of August, 1988. So... 
um, that's where they actually come out and say it. So um, now that that court case talked about Texas not having anything to say about another state, okay? And this is Downs versus Bidwell, uh, U.S. Supreme Court, 1901, 182 U.S. 244, eliminating then from the opinions of this court all expressions unnecessary to the disposition of the particular case, and gleaning therefrom the exact point decided in each, the following propositions may be considered as established. That the District of Columbia and the territories are not states within the judicial clause of the Constitution given jurisdiction in cases between citizens of different states. Okay, so they're not under Article 3. Okay, they're not states. District of Columbia and the territories are not states. That's Article 3 is what they're talking about. The territories are not states within the meaning of Revised Statute 709, permitting writs of error. That's why they all, after this, they went to put writs of certiorari. Okay. And, but that's also why that if there's a case, uh, Brown versus Texas, that was a, the Supreme Court answered, and it was appealed from the uh, county court at law in El Paso, Texas. And um, it was appealed directly to the Supreme Court. I think it was a writ of error, but I don't know. It doesn't say, but I think that's what it was. They don't say, it just says it was appealed. And uh, and um, uh, and the Supreme Court answered it. Brown versus Texas. Look it up. Anyways, uh, number three, the District of Columbia and the territories are states, as that word is used in treaties with foreign powers with respect to ownership, disposition, and inheritance of property. Okay, that's talking about the Sestake Trust and foreign foreign treaties, foreign governments. Okay, and so they are states. Okay, so. It said that that Supreme Court, and it was an unsigned decision, and and they do that all the time. So, um, the the um, um, they're saying that Texas has nothing to say about another state, and that's true. A couple of months before this case was released, Congress, before this case, Downs versus Bidwell, okay, Congress passed the Code of Law for the District of Columbia at 31 Stat 1189, and the Code of Law for the District of Columbia, we're going to be talking about that in here, um, talks about the Sestake use, all, all sorts of stuff. And I think what happened is the Supreme Court told the Department of Justice what they're planning on talking about, and and so that's when the Department of Justice uh, prepared the Code of Law for the District of Columbia, which is now known, by the way, the Code of Law for the District of Columbia is now known as the United States Code. We'll talk about that too. So let's look at a little bit of history. First of all, in 1861, the Southern states walk out of Congress. And Congress fails to have a quorum to conduct business. And Lincoln orders Congress to reconvene. That's under executive authority, that's under martial law. And this is actually the text or part of the text from the executive order from Lincoln, from the proclamation. This is a proclamation. 15th of April, 1861, deeming that the present condition of public affairs presents an extraordinary occasion, I do hereby, in virtue of the power vested in me, uh, in me vested by the Constitution, convene both houses of Congress. Senators and representatives are therefore summoned to assemble at their respective chambers at 12 o'clock noon on Thursday, 4th day of July next, and then there to consider and determine such measures as in their wisdom the public safety and interest may seem to demand. And witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the United States to be affixed, done at the city of Washington this 15th day of April, in the year of our Lord, 1861, and of the independence of the United States, the 85th year. And so this is the part of the text of that proclamation, okay? But it's more than a proclamation. It looks like he's ordering them to convene both houses. He's convening them. That's more than a proclamation. <laughs> Anyways, um, 1871, Congress creates a corporation called the District of Columbia, uh, for the District of Columbia called United States. All of those people are now dead and it's impossible for the lawful de jure Congress to reconvene. Think about it, folks. Think about it. And then zip codes. All zip codes are in the District of Columbia. 
The said Supreme Court shall divide the said district into ten subdistricts and prescribe the place in each subdistrict where the justice thereof shall have his office for the transaction of business and may change the boundaries of such subdistricts and locations of the offices of the justices therein from time to time as the volume and convenience of the business may require. And that's Code of Law for the District of Columbia, Section 3, 31 Stat, 1190. All corporations are in a zip code. All government offices are in a zip code. The United States Postal Service is a corporation domiciled in the District of Columbia. At La, Fa La Afont Square. Okay, that's French, by the way. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting that that's what it's called. But that's where the post, United States Postal Service is domiciled. And so all of these, it's corporations, okay? Corporations, the Supreme Court has said, and we're going to talk about that here, is that Congress has plenary authority over corporations, okay? Plenary means total. We're going to talk about that. So a U.S. citizen, all persons born or naturalized United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States. That's section one of the 14th Amendment. Uh, the term resident of citizen of the United States is distinguished from citizen of one of the several states and that the former is a special class of citizen created by Congress. Well, think about it. Congress is a corporation and they can only create other corporations. Think about it. <laughs> The only absolute and unqualified right of a United States citizen is to residence within the territory of boundaries of the United States. Corporations don't have rights unless Congress gives them rights. Okay, think about it. Civil rights under the 14th Amendment are for federal citizens and not state citizens. Federal citizens as parents have no right to the custody of their infant children except subject to the paramount right of the state. And that's Watley versus Newhall. Um... People have asked me about this, and this is actually a, a, a summary of the case, um, and uh, it's 1905, uh, um, and it's uh, the site is 136F Federal Reports, uh, page 941. The term citizen of the United States is analogous to the term subject in a common law. That's because it's a corporation. The privileges and immunities of citizens of the United States do not necessarily include all the rights protected by the first state amendments to the federal constitution against the powers of the federal government. Those are all common law rights. And again, the corporations. Corporations have no rights unless Congress grants them. Citizenship is a political status and may be defined in privilege limited by Congress. Therefore, U.S. citizens riding one of the states of the Union are classified as property and franchises of the federal government as an individual entity entity okay and and that's true okay they are uh, corporations okay franchises of the federal government it's a corporation okay well it's 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 actually assessed k use okay but if you look at the definition of corporation we're going to get there here soon uh, under 15 usc section 44 it includes that definition can include assessed k use and while the 14th Amendment does not create a national citizenship, it has the effect of making that citizenship paramount and dominant instead of derivative and dependent upon state citizenship. So then think about it. The, the two classes of citizens existed from the beginning. And, and matter of fact, if you read um, the Acts, okay, in the Bible, it talks about two classes of citizens. And so the point being is, is that they've always existed. And... Um, the uh, originally the way the Constitution was written, uh, state uh, the U.S. citizen was derivative and dependent upon him being a state citizen. In other words, remember that case, um, Rondo versus Delaware, where the the president directors of the corporation um, had to sue and be sued. Okay, well it changed it, turned it upside down. The Amendment 14th reversed and annulled the original policy of the Constitution, so it was effectively a coup. Okay. And, and my opinion, and, and we're going to talk a little bit about this further on, is the Masons. There was those Masons, the, the South was full of Masons. Albert Pike was a Confederate general. And I think that the, the Masons were all, they're all controlled by the, 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 um, the, uh, the King of England. Okay. And so uh, there was, when I was over in, uh, in uh, I worked for Bombardier in Toronto for a while and 
and uh, there's a Bombardier group of companies, and one of us, Short Brothers. So the Short Brothers guys, they used to come over. I used to actually work for Shorts, is who I worked for, at the Bombardier facility. And, and I got to know all these guys from Northern Ireland, and they talked about how there's two levels in the Masons. There's the, you can get up to be a 33rd or 32nd degree Mason for people like me and you, but after that, it's only the royal family that's allowed in there, and they're the ones that are really pulling the strings. So uh, a citizen of the United States is a civilly dead entity operating as co-trustee and co-beneficiary of the Public Charitable Trust, the Constructo Sestake Trust of the U.S. Inc. under the 14th Amendment, which upholds the debt of the USA and U.S. Inc. And that is a summary. That's not a quote. Look at it. You know, people have said, I can't find that in there. Well, hello, it's a summary. Read the five pages. You see, you know how... how the small print, the congressional record is in three columns and it's in tiny print. And it's five pages of congressional record. <laughs> it's a summary of what five pages says. Uh, this is uh, the uh, act to uh, establish the code of law for the District of Columbia, which is approved on March 3rd, 1901 by the 56th Congress, Session 231, Stat 1189. Um, and then at section 117, 31, stat 1206, it says, in addition to the jurisdiction conferred in the preceding section, plenary jurisdiction is hereby given to said court holding said special term to hear and determine all questions rel relative to execution of any and all wills. Okay? We're talking about the SESTA K use now. That means total jurisdiction, total dictatorship, folks. And then at uh, section 1617 at 31 stat 1432, legal estate to be in the Sestake use. Okay? A use is Roman law for usufruct. Okay? And a usufruct is a type of a trust. This is all Roman law, folks. Yet still it was found difficult to set bounds to ecclesiastical ingenuity. That's the Roman cult, folks. For when they were driven of all, out of all their former holes, they devised a new method of conveyance by which the lands were granted not to themselves directly, but to nominal fiafis to the use of the religious houses, thus distinguishing between the possession and the use, okay, to the use, okay, use you fruct, that's sad, it's short for use you fruct, to the use you fruct of the religious houses, thus distinguishing between the possession and the use you fruct and receiving the actual profits while a season of the land remained in the nominal fiafi who was held by the courts of equity, then under the direction of the clergy. Isn't that convenient, eh? The, the Roman cult gets to decide. <laughs> what a scam! <laughs> to be bound in conscience to his count to assess the KU's fruct for the rents and emoluments of the estate. That's taxes, folks. <laughs> And it is to these inventions that our practitioners are indebted for the introduction of usufrux and trusts, the foundation of modern conveyancing. Uses, that's just short for usufrux. Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition, volume two, under the definition of Mortmain. Every Sestake, every taxpayer is a Sestake trust having sufficient interest in preventing abuse of the trust to be recognized in the court of the, in the field of this court's prerogative jurisdiction. That's another summary in Rebola, and that's a summary of that case. Slater's protestations to the effect that he derives no benefit from the United States government have no bearing on his legal obligations to pay income tax. And that's true. If you're a taxpayer, if they can take a penny, they can take it all. If they can take a penny, you're a slave. You have no rights. Unless the defendant can establish that he's not a citizen of the United States, the IRS possesses authority to de attempt to determine his federal tax liability. Liability. It's commercial. Think about it, folks. It is evident that they, U.S. citizens, have not the political rights which are vested in citizens of the states and are not constituents of any community which is vested in any sovereign power of government. Their positions partakes more of the character of subjects than of citizens. They are subject to the laws of the United States, but they have no voice in its management. Why would a corporation have voice in its management? If they are allowed to make laws, the validity of these laws are derived from the sanction of a government in which they are not represented. Mere citizenship they may have, but the political rights of citizens they cannot enjoy. Okay, this is all talking about the Sestake use. Okay, this is 
Roman cult, such as KU's, um, corporations, U.S. citizens and corporations. It is enough that the people know there was an election. The people who cast the votes decide nothing. The people who count the votes decide everything. Well, that's the truth. That's the way it works, folks. <laughs> that's that's when it's a D.C. election, for sure. When it's a District of Columbia election, you don't have any rights. Residents, as distinguished from citizens or aliens, are permitted to take up a permanent abode in the country, being bound to the society by reason of their dwelling in it. They are subject to its laws so long as they remain there and being protected by it, they must defend it. Although they do not enjoy all the rights of citizens, they have only certain privileges which the law or custom gives them. Permanent residents are those who have been given the right of perpetual residence. They are a sort of citizen of a less privileged character and are subject to the society without enjoying all its advantages. Their children succeed to their status, for the right of perpetual residence given them by the state passes to their children. And that's taken from the Law of Na Nations by Vitell, Book 1, Chapter 19, Section 213, page 87. All statutes, state or federal, passed prior to 1861 are lawful de jure statutes. All statutes, state or federal, passed after 1861 are martial law statutes. Two national governments exist, one to be maintained under the Constitution with all its restrictions, the other to be maintained by Congress outside and independently of that instrument. And that's the dissenting opinion of Justice Marshall Harlan, Downs v. Bidwell, 182 U.S. 244, 1901. In 1871, Congress set up a corporation to operate as the government of the District of Columbia. So that corporation obviously doesn't have anything to do with the Constitution. And then the Constitution is there, and so if they do have something to do with it, it's only because they want to maintain the illusion for you. <laughs> 1933, the United States was declared bankrupt. 1933, the United States was seized by the creditors. Uh, and the United States, this is under the Uniform Commercial Code, uh, the United States is located in the District of Columbia. Okay, Section 9-307, location of debtor. Okay, Uniform Commercial Code, that's District of Columbia, folks. Um, Reconstruction Acts make U.S. citizens eligible to vote. The style of this confederacy, this is the Articles of Confederation, Article 1. The style of this confederacy shall be the United States of America. And I haven't seen that anywhere except on Federal Reserve notes and land title, land patents. This is a passport, and it doesn't say the United States of America, and this is what you usually see all over the place. Air Force One, you see it all over. Um, this is what you see 99% of the time. Um, the only place... The only place that, I can, that I've ever seen the United States of America is on Federal Reserve notes. Okay, and this is a silver certificate, same thing, commercial paper, or on land patents. It's an established fact the United States federal government's been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act, March 9, 1933, 48 Stat 1, Public Law 89-719, declared by President Roosevelt being bankrupt and insolvent, H.J.R. 192, 73rd Congress, in session June 5, 1933, Joint resolution to suspend the gold standard and abrogate the gold clause, dissolve the sovereign authority of the United States and the official capacities of all United States governmental offices, officers, and departments. And it's further evidence that the United States federal government exists today in name only. So at the same time that the government went bankrupt, it went into a national emergency, and that's in the next slide. Since March 9, 1933, the United States has been in a state of declared national emergency. That's martial law, folks. Under the powers delegated by these statutes, the president may seize property, organize and control the means of production, seize commodities, assign military forces abroad, institute martial law, seize and control all transportation and communication, regulate the operation of private enterprise, restrict travel and in a plethora of particular ways, control the lives of all American citizens. A majority of the people of the United States have lived all their lives under emergency rule. For 40 years, freedoms and governmental procedures guaranteed by the Constitution have in varying degrees been abridged by laws brought into force by states of national emergency. 
and that's taken from U.S. Senate Report Number 93-549, dated November 19, 1973. You think anything's changed? Absolutely not. So, a standing. So we're talking about standing again. A requirement to register to vote is that you have to swear in the penalty of perjury a U.S. citizen. And a U.S. citizen's a corporation and a citizen of the District of Columbia. Okay, the United States is located in the District of Columbia. We already talked about that in Section 9-307, Location of Debtor, Uniform Commercial Code. And the definition of corporation. This is found at Title 15 of uh, United States Code, also known as uh, District Code of Law for the District of Columbia, Title 15, Section 44. Corporation shall be deemed to include any company, trust, so-called Massachusetts Trust or Association, incorporated or unincorporated, which is organized to carry on business for its own profit or that of its members, and has and Okay, and this is the important part, and has shares of capital or capital stock or certificates of interest. And then the next definition is does not have shares. And any company, trust, so-called Massachusetts Trust or Association, it's the same stuff. Incorporated or unincorporated without shares of capital or capital stock or certificates of interest. That's the SESTK usufruct, okay, except partnerships. And that's why partnerships are really slick, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> which is organized to carry on business for its own profit or that of its members, okay? So, again, if it doesn't, that's the usufruct. That's the SESTK usufruct. It, it could include that. Let me put it that way. It includes a whole bunch of things. But the point is, is that it includes that usufruct. Commerce means commerce among the several states or with foreign nations or in any territory of the United States or in the District of Columbia or between any territory and another or between any territory and any state or foreign nation or between the District of Columbia and any state or territory or foreign nation. So they're putting you into commerce under the Commerce Clause is what they're doing. They're bringing the District of Columbia outside 10 miles square in violation of Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 to exercise exclusive legislation in all cases whatsoever over such district not exceeding 10 miles square as may by session of particular states in the acceptance of Congress become the seat of government of the United States and to exercise like authority over all places purchased by the consent of the legislature of the state in which the same shall be for the erection of forts, magazines, arsenal, dockyards, and other needful buildings. That's Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. So, not exceeding 10 miles square. That's why the standing issue, when you challenge standing, it's like hurts them big time, because they're assaulting you with that Roman cult Sestic A trust, and you say, where's your standing to talk to me as a man? In other words, you're not pretend interested in being a surety for their Roman cult Sestic A trust. Otherwise, they'll sell you into slavery as surety for their fictitious entity. That's, they do that every day. The prisons are populated with those people. The said Supreme Court shall divide the district into ten subdistricts and prescribe the place in each subdistrict where the justice thereof shall have its office for the transaction of business and may change the boundaries of sub subdistricts and locations of the offices of the justices therein from time to time as the volume and convenience of business may require. We already talked about this. The Code of Law for the District of Columbia, Section 3, 31 Stat 1190. All corporations are in a zip code. All government offices are in a zip code. And the United States Postal Service is a corporation domiciled in the District of Columbia. Anyone for any for election in America has to be a U.S. citizen. All elections in America are for corporations. Whenever they drag you into a court case, it's by a corporation with a zip code. State of Texas, State of Arizona, Bowie Independent School District. They're all corporations. That's all they do. All corporations in America are subject to plenary total authority under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3. And this is uh, National Mutual Insurance Company versus Tidewater Transfer Company, U.S. Supreme Court, 1948. Congress has exclusive legislative jurisdiction over citizens of Washington District of Columbia, and through their plenary power, that means total power, nationally covers those citizens, even when one of the states of the Union, 
though the district expands for the purpose of regulating its citizens wherever they go throughout the states of the Union. So think about it, folks. You remember that Kavanaugh hearings when Kavanaugh was was uh, um, appointed to the Supreme Court? And they asked him, can we go after a U.S. citizen in Afghanistan? And he said, yes, you can. Because the U.S. citizens under the Commerce Clause. Think about it, folks. Plenary jurisdiction. A court's full and absolute power over the subject matter and the parties in the case. Plenary is full, complete, entire. That's Black's 8th edition and 9th edition. And then Bouvier's Law Dictionary, 3rd revision, 8th edition. Plenary, full, complete in the courts of admiralty and English ecclesiastical courts. Causes or suits in respect of different course of proceedings in each are termed plenary or summary. Plenary are full and formal. Suits are those in which the proceedings must be full and formal. The term summary is applied to those causes where the proceedings are more succinct and less formal. So it's plenary. It's jurist. It's total. Plenary power. This is Wikipedia, but it's it defines it. And then Legal Information Institute, which is Cornell Law School. Okay. Anyways, plenary. A plenary power is, is a complete and absolute power to take action on a particular issue with no limitations. And that's Wikipedia. Plenary power. Complete power over a particular area with no limitations. This term is often used to describe the commerce power of Congress. Under the Commerce Clause, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, Congress has granted full power over interstate commerce. The court has found the states are not able to pass laws affecting interstate commerce without permission of Congress. And again, this is total power. All elections, so District of Columbia is a dictatorship, okay? District of Columbia is communist. That's what it is, okay? All elections in America are in the District of Columbia with corporations and zip codes. Texas has nothing to say about elections in the District of Columbia. Prior to the Civil War, the landowners were automatically the electors. You did not have to register to vote. If you're a landowner, then you're entitled to vote. All statutes are in support of the martial law. All statutes apply to subjects only. All statutes are District of Columbia. It's dictatorship. There are two kinds of court proceedings, court martial and military commissions. All, only Article Three courts are set up by we the people, and the only Article Three court is the Supreme Court under certain circumstances, or we the people convene our common law juries. That's it. There is no other Article Three courts. Where a controversy is of such a character as to require the exercise of judicial power are defined by Article 3, the jurisdiction thereof can be conferred only on courts established in virtue of that article. And Congress is without power to vest that judicial power in any other judicial tribunal, or of course in an executive officer or administrative or executive board, since they are incapable of receiving it. Okay, So it's not that Congress can't give them the power, that they're incapable of receiving it. They're incapable of receiving it. They're thieves. Don't get me going. It is noted as significant that the act constituting the court dispenses with trial by jury, a provision which is distinctly upheld in spite of Seventh Amendment and Elrath, McElrath versus United States, where with respect to the status of the court, the opinion concludes. A duty to give... <sighs> A duty to give decisions which are advisory only, and so without the force of judicial judgments may be laid upon a legislative court, but not on a, a constitutional court established under Article 3. And that's um, Williams versus United States, 1933. Legislative courts are not judicial. Legislative courts are not Article 3 courts. Legislative courts give advisory decisions only that do not have the force of law, Executive, Administrative, Executive Board, and Legislative Courts is incapable of receiving authority to be an Article Three Court. Only an Article Three Court has the force of law. The judge works for the state, the prosecutor works for the state, the police or witness works for the state. The vast majority of the disputes that the police initiate on behalf of their employer are also adjudicated by their employer, where the plaintiff, the judge, the antagonist, the police, and the only witness, also the police, all represent the same party, and since no corpus delecti, mens rea, or ex reus can be produced, 
doesn't technically qualify to be a herd according to its own laws. The state, therefore, is indistinguishable from a criminal cartel. And that's that's your typical municipal court right there, okay? They're all legislative courts, okay? What do you think? It's set up by the police court, by the, the, the act of the state legislator establishing that, that police corporation and that city corporation. And they're all located in the District of Columbia. Remember, they're corporations. Oh, look, a kangaroo court. We can't even begin to count the number of times judges, lawyers, and statement have said there isn't any common law anymore. It's been replaced by statutes. They've been more truthful if they said there isn't any common law anymore. It's been replaced by martial law. Statutes have been passed. This is taken from the cause of necessities for taking up arms. 1775. Martial law supersedes and replaces common law. So you can't mix it. But, but this is the same thing that caused the War of Independence. Statutes have been passed, extending courts of admiralty and vice admiralty far beyond their ancient limits for depriving us of the accustomed and inestimable privilege of trial by jury in cases affecting both life and property to supersede the course of common law and instead thereof to publish in order the use and exercise of the law marshal. And so we're altering fundamentally the form of government established by charter. It's a dictatorship, folks. We saw the misery to which this dictatorship would reduce us. There are no common law offenses against the United States, only those acts which Congress has forbidden with penalties for disobedience of its command or crimes. Under Texas law, no act or omission is a crime unless made so by statute. The legislature may create an offense and in the same enactment provide exceptions to its application. Arizona. All common law offenses or affirmative defenses are abolished. No conduct or omission constitutes an offense or an affirmative defense unless an offense or an affirmative defense under this title or under another statute or ordinance. NSA takes care of the spying, CIA takes care of the drug trade, FBI takes care of the terror attacks and the false flags, Homeland Security takes care of the rest, and they're all in the District of Columbia, only. They're only in the District of Columbia. The CIA owns everybody of any significance in the major media, that's William Colby, that's in the, like, the 80s. Former CIA director. We'll know our dif disinformation program is complete when everything in the American media, uh, everything the American public believes is false. William Casey, CIA director for, from the first staff meeting, 1981. Deception is a state of mind and a mind of the state. James Angleton, head of the CIA counterintelligence from 1954 to 1974. The Libra Code. Instructions for the Government of the Armies of the United States, prepared by Francis Lieber, promulgated by General Orders Number 100 by President Lincoln, 24th of April, 1863. Article 1. Okay, this is everywhere. A place, district, or country occupied by an enemy stands in consequence of the occupation under the martial law of the invading or occupying army whether any proclamation declaring martial law or any public warning to the inhabitants has been issued or not, martial law is the immediate and direct effect and consequence of occupation or conquest. The presence of a hostile army proclaims its martial law. So, I mean, that's everywhere. Okay, this is international law. So this is not just unique to America. This is anywhere. This is international law. Article 2. Martial law does not cease during a hostile occupation except by special proclamation ordered by the commander-in-chief or by special mention in a treaty of peace concluding the war. That's Article 2. And I can tell you that there's been no special proclamations. And there is a treaty of peace for Arizona. It's called the Treaty of Hidalgo. But it doesn't say anything about ending the martial law. Why do you think all the police in California, they're all military police? Martial law in a hostile country consists in the suspension by the occupying military authority, the civil and criminal law, 
and of the domestic administration and government of the occupied place or territory, and in substitution of military rules and rule and force for the same, as well as the dictation of general laws. That's dictatorship, folks. As far as military necessity requires the suspension, substitution, or dictation, dictatorship. Note, under martial law, only the criminal jurisdiction of a military court is the recognized law, but as Article 3 says, the civil courts can continue wholly or in part as long as the civil jurisdiction does not violate the military orders laid down by the commander-in-chief or one of his commanders. By this means, a military venue jurisdiction and authority imposed upon the occupied populace under disguise of the ordinary civil courts and officers of the occupied district or region because the so-called civil authorities in an occupied district or region only act at the pleasure of a military authority. Hello, don't you see what's going on? It should also be noted here that several state legislatures, county boards of commissioners, and city councils are constantly legislating to please the edicts of the federal government, the occupying force, and that their legislation in a sense is not an exercise of state sovereignty, but instead a compliance with the edicts of the military force which occupies the several states and consequently are edicts under martial law rule. Edicts as in dictatorship. A statute is an edict under martial law. A regulation is an edict under martial law. Code is an edict under martial law. Rule is an edict under martial law. A constitution is an edict under martial law. A constitutional amendment is an edict under martial law. Copies of these documents can be found in my private group at Yahoo called a... Oh, damn. Actually, I need to change that, don't I? Can be found on my website. Under the free files link. For a complete set of YouTube videos with private information shares, a DVD with over 150 searchable law dictionaries and other books and forms, contact me privately at engineerwin at yahoo.com. Some donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer a gold or silver coin, but as an extreme less desirable alternative, I can accept the IOUs, the fake money, the military script. You know their securities too, eh? <laughs> they are. Send me an email for particulars. Let me just modify this a little bit. There we go. All statutes, codes, rules, and regulations, and constitutions are edicts under martial law. Every constitutional amendment after 1861 is an edict under martial law. Military necessity is martial law. All Civil War states are under military occupation. That means Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Texas, Missouri, Tennessee, and Kentucky. All the states in the territory conquered by the war with Mexico are under military occupation. Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, Nevada. Uh, dictation is dictatorship, military dictatorship. Law enforcement, they're enforcing the martial law. And the rest of the United States is under martial law because of the bankruptcy. <laughs> They'll get you one way or the other. Under martial law, there's no separation of powers. When the southern states walked out of Congress in 1861, they ceased to have a quorum. Under executive authority, Lincoln ordered Congress to reconvene. When the Supreme Court ruled against something Lincoln did, he ordered troops to the Supreme Court. And to this day, Rule 45, under the Supreme Court rules, it says all process of this court issues in the name of the President of the United States. There's no separation of powers. Hello, you're in the District of Columbia. It's a dictatorship. Pentagon Inc., Google, YouTube, Facebook, Amazon, masquerading as private companies.
This court declares the slaughterhouse cases, declared in the slaughterhouse cases that the 14th Amendment as well as the 13th Amendment and the 15th were adopted to protect the Negroes and their freedom. So they weren't for anybody else. The 13th, 14th, 15th Amendments were designed mainly for the new, uh, protection of the newly emancipated Negroes. So, you know, I mean, what's a Negro? <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, and, and, you know, in that case, Dred Scott versus Sanford, because Dred Scott was, uh, was a black guy, um, and Sanford was a county sheriff, and the Supreme Court said the Constitution wasn't written for, for you. Well, you know, how do we know that Dred Scott wasn't one of the posterity uh, talked about in the preamble to the Constitution, because who knows who was sleeping with who in the 1700s. <laughs> so I don't care what color you are. <laughs> who knows who was sleeping with who in the 1700s. That was well known. That there was all sorts of hanky-panky going on. <laughs> After the adoption of the 14th Amendment, a bill which became the first Civil Rights Act was introduced in the 39th Congress, the major purpose of which was to secure to the recently freed Negroes, all the civil rights secured to white men. None other than citizens of the United States were within the provisions of the act. Okay, so the U.S. citizen is a corporation. It's a Sestiquet Trust. The dissenting opinion asserts that the 14th Amendment is a part of the Constitution of the United States. While this same assertion has been made by the United States Supreme Court, that court has never held that the amendment was legally adopted. I cannot believe that any court in full possession of its faculties could honestly hold that the amendment was properly approved and adopted. Well said. A judge that's honest. There's not too many of those nowadays. Everything done after 1861 was done under martial law. Necessity. All statutes, constitutions, codes, rules, regulations, amendments for the unconstitutional corporation that was set up in 1871 are for the unconstitutional corporation that was set up in 1871. Martial law falls under the law of nations. This will work for any country on the planet because it falls under the law of nations. Law of nations and international law are convertible phrases. For any national emergency, including a bankruptcy, all you have to do is prove that your country is operating under martial law. I should say, find any national emergency, including a bankruptcy, and you will have proof that your country is operating under martial law. Police were in military uniforms. Martial law extends to property and to persons, whether they're subjects of the enemy or aliens to that government. Article 7 of the Lever Code, subjects or aliens and nobody else does not affect we the people. Why would anyone want to be a low-life scumbag U.S. citizen? If the military police officer talking to you, if a military police officer is talking to you, then you're a subject and you're the enemy. They're bringing the District of Columbia outside a maximum of 10 miles squares under the Commerce Clause, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, which is plenary jurisdiction, a dictatorship, folks. My contact information, my blog is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com, my website is sovereigntyinternational.fii, my email address is engineerwin at yahoo.com, my YouTube profile is Sovereign Living. My Facebook community page, I deleted it due to censorship on the part of Facebook. My private group called Sovereignty International on Facebook is being deleted. Quite frankly, I haven't been to Facebook in months. I have no interest in going there. If And, and uh, you know, really uh, what I need to do is, is ban all the people on that group. And there's like 17,000 of them. And so then, then that would take me a long time, more than I want to spend there, quite frankly. Anyways, um... My Yahoo private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. My Google private group, actually, i got to change this. This is Freelist private group now. There we go. Private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. Follow me on Twitter. Um, uh, that's another thing. I gotta go through this thing. Man, I thought I had gone through this thing and gotten rid of all that stuff. Twitter's a has been. They're talking about charging you money just to do a tweet on Twitter. Screw that. They kicked me off of there. I'm not even interested in going back. Follow me on Steam It, Sovereignty International, BitChute, Sovereignty International, and my HowTube channel is also called Sovereignty International. And you can buy a subscription and and 
you know, most of these videos are going to be on my uh, how-to channel. Uh, but there will be a lot of videos that will not be available anywhere else but on the how-to channel. Videos on how to do a challenge to standing and some tips on how to make sure that it, do it right. Uh, you know, it's, I can't tell you how many times people go and take something simple like a one-page document and screw it all up. <laughs> You know, they they always contact me and say, how come this thing didn't work? Well, what did you do? Well, I can see why it didn't work. <laughs> Anyways, um, all subjects over which the sovereign power of the state extends are objects of taxation, but those over which it does not extend are exempt from taxation. This proposition may be pronounced as self-evident. It's obvious. The sovereignty of the state extends to everything which exists by its authority or its permission. The Congress shall have power to dispose of and make all needful rules and regulations respecting other property, the, actually it's the territory or other property of the United States. Um, that's Article 4, Section 3, Clause 2. And that's consistent. I mean, it's the same everywhere. This is the Canadian Ownership and Control Determination Act. And that's in definitions. It says own means subject to the regulations. If you're subject to the regulations, you're property. Every tree, living things, people, animals, plants, heaven, earth, the universe, uh, lawful and natural, that's God's. Everything else is fiction, okay? And that's Satan's, okay? It's all satanic. Fictional things, persons, corporations, domicile legal, political, that's all satanic. Martial law affects chiefly the police and the collection of public revenue and taxes, whether imposed by the expelled government or by the invader, and refers mainly to the support and efficiency of the army, its safety, and the safety of its operations. That's Article 10 of the Libra Code, General Orders 100. Now you know why they always want you to be safe. Be safe! Be safe! Are you worried about your safety? No, I'm not. Get lost. <laughs> Commerce Clause, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, a contract. If you get mixed up in the Commerce Clause, then you are a slave. Do you feel like you have no constitutional rights when it comes to income tax? It's because you don't. The Constitution does not apply where two parties have a contractual relationship, where you're in Article 3 of the Constitution, or I should say, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, that falls under the Commerce Clause, and you are property. You are a slave. They can do anything they want. All police are military police, FBI military police, city military police, state military police, homeland security military police, county military police. They're all military police. All police are military police from the District of Columbia. They're U.S. citizens. Read their codes. It says right in there they have to be a U.S. citizen. There was a guy that I heard about that was in Florida, and he was a cop, and he said, I'm not a U.S. citizen. They fired his ass so fast as that spun. They can't. They have to be a U.S. citizen. That's District of Columbia, folks. They're bringing the District of Columbia outside a 10-mile square onto the land of Texas or Florida or wherever, and uh, and then they're holding those District of Columbia elections. And if they're talking to you, then you are a subject and you are the enemy. The real domestic terrorists right there. You're looking at them right there. Murdered by the police. Dozens of people. We talked it over and uh, after investigating it ourselves, we decided we're not guilty because you are the enemy, folks. Time to wake up. You are the enemy. Beware of violent street gangs. Typical gang member, gang colors, heavily armed, well organized, gang identifiers, do not approach. Gang members are aggressive and notoriously violent. According to Aristotle, tyrant, the tyrant, who, in order to hold his power, suppresses every superiority, does away with good men, forgets education and light, controls every movement of citizens, keeping them under perpetual servitude, wants them to grow accustomed to baseness and cowardice, has his spies everywhere to listen to what is said in the meetings, and spreads dissension and calumny among citizens. Calumny is lies. I mean, the news media, you don't even trust anything the news media says. is nothing but lies. Calumny. 
and impoverishes them, is obliged to make war in order to keep the subjects occupied and impose upon them a permanent need of a chief. Gee, that sounds like Obama or Biden. Remember, Trump went and stopped all the wars. This is John Locke, Two Treatises of Government, Book 2, Chapter 18. The top one is Section 199, and the bottom one is Section 201. Tyranny is the exercise of power beyond right, which nobody can have a right to. And this is making use of the power anyone has in his hands, not for the good of those who are under it, but for his own private, separate advantage. When the government, however entitled, makes not the law, but his will, the rule, and his commands and actions are not directed to the preservation of the properties of his people, but to the satisfaction of his own ambition, revenge, covetous, or any other irregular passion, tis a mistake to think that this fault only think this fault only in monarchies, other forms of government are liable to it as well as that. For wherever the power that is put in any hands for the government of the people and the preservation of their properties is applied to other ends and made use of to impoverish, harass, or subdue them to the arbitrary and irregular commands of those who have it, there it presently becomes tyranny, whether those that use it are one or many. And this is the kind of stuff the Founding Fathers were reading, and that's what precipitated the War of Independence, folks. <laughs> I'll tell you, this guy was pretty sharp. Under international law of warfare, all parties to a cause must appear by non de guerre, because an alien enemy cannot maintain an action in during the war in his own name. A mixed war is made on one side by public authority and the other by mere private persons. The United States acknowledge and protect the hostile countries occupied by them, religion, morality, strictly private property, and persons of inhabitants, especially those of women, and the sacredness of domestic relations. Offenses to the contrary shall be rigorously punished. This rule does not interfere with the right of the victorious invader to tax the people or their property, to levy forced loans. Okay, what do you think these fake money that's circulating? to billet soldiers or to appropriate property, especially houses, lands, boats, or ships, and churches for temporary and military uses. The forced loans of 1862 and 1863 in the form of legal tender notes. Gee, that sounds like a Federal Reserve note. Matter of fact, that's a security, too. Were vital forces in the struggle for national supremacy. They form a part of the public debt of the United States. That's Juilliard versus Greenman, U.S. Supreme Court. Federal Reserve notes are military script. Federal Reserve notes are forced loans that are forcing you, the enemy, to loan the government money. Governments, any sovereign, descend to the level of a mere private corporation, take on the characteristics of a mere private citizen where private corporate commercial paper, Federal Reserve notes, and securities, checks, is concerned. They're all securities. For purposes of suits, such corporations and individuals are regarded as entities entirely separate from government. Clearfield Trust Company versus United States. Federal Reserve notes are military script. They're also securities. Gold Reserve Act of 1934, 48 Stat 344, as used in this act, the term United States means government of the United States. The term currency of the government of the United States means currency which is legal tender in the government of the United States and includes United States notes, treasury notes of 1890, gold certificates, silver certificates, Federal Reserve notes, and circulating notes of Federal Reserve banks and national bank associations. So again, this is all for government of the United States. What are you using them for? That's proof that they're bringing the District of Columbia outside of 10 Mile Square salting you, demanding some Federal Reserve notes. All statutes are martial law statutes. All statutes apply to subjects only. The military police often say you think our laws don't apply to you. The Libra Code says it all. Do they even teach you to read? The last thing they want to talk about is war crimes, and war crimes precipitate revolutions. And that's exactly what they're involved in. I have exclusive videos available on HowTube.com. 
Uh, the basic, uh, the only subscription level is $9.99 a month, plus for videos, plus unlimited email consultations. But I'm not a liar. Well, I meant an attorney. No, I meant a liar. But you can, but I can tell you what I would do under certain circumstances and where to find the forms. The only power that these New World Order Satanists have over us is through fraud and deception, and my agenda is to expose it for all our benefit, but I cannot fight all the battles. I'm currently publishing around a video a week, um, and uh, this video is going to go up there. Uh, but you just don't know how long YouTube is going to let my channel stay up. They need to be sued. And uh, and so I'm, I'm going to have to sue them. Uh, but at any rate, so you can always go to HowTube and watch my videos, because they'll always be there. Some of the exclusive content is an Arlington private information share. That's nine videos by itself. Land deed training. I think there's like about three videos on that. Estoppel certificates training, foreclosure estoppel certificates training, corporate denial training, toll roads notice and demand training, invoice training, notice of void judgment training, revocation signature training, third party witness training, federal habeas corpus training, um, revocation of voter registration train, uh, registration, uh, criminal complaint training. There's about three videos right there on that now, and there's going to be more. Um, and lawsuit training and other training. There's also um, challenge to standing training. And, uh, and there's going to be Petition for writ of mandamus, Texas, New York, and Nevada. And each one's going to be different because every state has different procedures. So um, these will give you ideas, but those are upcoming. Those are coming up. Uh, there's also Northeast Private Information Share videos. All forms, files, and other instructions are available for free on my website under the free files link. All exclusive content will be available on HowTube.com, and you can buy a subscription there. All empires are built the same way. You get 50% of the poor to go to war and kill the other 50% of the poor, leaving the rich to chit-chat in the Senate, which gives the impression that there's real democracy. You absorb the land and riches of your enemies and repeat whenever you need cash or new resources. War is terrorism with a bigger budget. Let's uh, fix this. There we go. Democracy, fake laws, false arrest, feel free. Terrorism is a system government that seeks to rule by intimidation. Check out my other videos, Bankster Thieves Playlist, Roman Cult Playlist, Bankrupt So-Called Governments. This is on YouTube. I don't know how long YouTube is going to have it up, but these playlists are there. Bar members 1 through 8. Let me change that. I thought I had gone through and corrected all this stuff. Do it yourself, I'm not to volunteer for the Selected Service and Draft Martial Laws here. Do it yourself, no income tax. Do it yourself, free mail. Do it yourself, kangaroo courts. 1 through 25, 26. Canada Border Pigs playlist. Bar members in their Satanic Connections playlist. Warning, this is the army you're told not to tolerate. The standing army you're told not to tolerate. Border followers, the servants of evil. You assist an evil system most effectively by obeying its orders and decrees. An evil system never deserves such allegiance. Allegiance to it means partaking of the evil. A good person will resist an evil system with his or her whole soul. Order followers are the ones that keep the system of slavery in place. Mark Passio, a former Satanist priest. Boy, I'll tell you, if you... If anybody would know, he would know. War is when your government tells you who the enemy is. Revolution is when you figure it out for yourself. 
When liberty and freedom are at stake, your silence isn't golden, it's yellow. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. These Roman cults Satanists are bending over backwards to make sure you think you have constitutional rights. It's an extremely important for them that people do not figure this out because the last time they were doing war crimes that precipitated a revolution. That's what caused the revolution. If you challenge jurisdiction, the so-called judge is required to compel a prosecutor to prove jurisdiction or dismiss the case. And if they do anything else, it's a denial of due process, a war crime. And so that's why I do the challenge. I do the challenge to jurisdiction or challenge to standing. One of the two, always. And then I don't even, I don't even wait for them. I go to the Court of Appeals for a mandamus, and that's done. They are cowards. Remember, Aristotle said that encourage them to be cowards. They are. They're cowards. They're real brave when there's 20 or 30 of them, but when it's just you and them, they're cowards. They sneak around, fabricate evidence that you're the enemy and a subject, their slave, and they will never confront you with lots of their, without lots of their buddies to back them up. You are the enemy, and the sooner you figure it out, the better. You are a subject, and they're slave, and the sooner you figure that out, the better. Give me liberty or give me death was a quote by Samuel Adams after witnessing a man flogged to death for refusing to take a license. A license is a contract, so, so they want to do, do commerce. They're assaulting people with the Rome cult Sestake Trust. And doing this, I shall have occasion, incidentally, to events how true it is that states and governments were made for man, and at the same time how true it is that his creatures and servants have first deceived, next vilified, and at last oppressed their master and maker. A state like a merchant makes a contract, a dishonest state like a dishonest merchant woefully refuses to discharge it. That's exactly what's going on today. These were uh, Chisholm versus Georgia, that's like 1792. And that was shortly after the War of Independence. It's back, folks. It's back. It's happening again. Time to wake up. Remember, it's warfare. You have to treat it like it's warfare because that is exactly what it is. Don't wait for them to attack you. Attack them first. The number one rule of warfare is the best defense is a good offense. Make an affidavit of corporate denial. Serve them with a notice and demand that's designed to take away their presumptions. And if you do this effectively, it will put them in a very difficult position. If you do this well, you may be able to get them fired or worse. Make an affidavit of criminal complaint and serve it on the U.S. attorney and let the FBI go over there and educate them. Yeah, it works really good for me, i got to tell you. They're all District of Columbia courts. The judge works for the state. The prosecutor works for the state. The police or witness works for the state. The vast majority of the disputes that the police initiate on behalf of their employer are adjudicated by their employer, where the plaintiff, the judge, the antagonist, the police, and the only witness also the police all represent the same party, and since no corpus delicti, mens rea, or ax reus can be produced, doesn't technically qualify to be heard according to its own laws. The state, therefore, is indistinguishable from a criminal cartel. The state and their municipal corporation are all corporations. Uh, operating under the Commerce Clause, which is all falls under Congress's plenary authority. What do you think you see going on here? This is plenary authority going on. They just want to maintain an illusion so you don't figure out what's going on, because if people figured it out, it would be over in a heartbeat. Section 1, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude is sect as a punishment for crime where the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist in the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. That's the current so-called 13th Amendment. He, the prisoner, has a consequence of his crime, not only forfeited his liberty, but all his personal rights, except those which the law and its humanity affords him. He is, for the time being, a slave of the state. And so, again, you're volunteering. It's all Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, Commerce Clause. And they're getting you, the man, to be the surety for their fictitious entity, and our prisons are populated with people that, that have done that. The First World War must be brought about in order to permit the Illuminati to overthrow the power of the Tsars in Russia, and making that country a fortress of atheistic communism. 
The divergences caused by the Agent Tur, agents of the Illuminati between the British and Germanic empires, will be used to foment this war. At the end of the war, communism will be built and used in order to destroy the other governments and order to weaken the religions. And that's Albert Pike, Confederate General. Okay, so this is like in the in the 1860s, leader of the Freemasons, uh, um, Satanist taken from his book, Morals and Dogma. Okay, and so he was he was a Confederate general. He was a a, a grand Masonic leader. Okay, this is all coming from the the the. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, you know, I used to call her the bitch, and she's dead now, so now it's the son of a bitch. <laughs> In England, okay? Charles III, you know, Charles I got beheaded. Charles II got overthrown by Oliver Cromwell. Let's see what happens with Charles III. Maybe we'll get his neck stretched or something. Hey, I guess we'll see. It's all going to be entertainment. I mean, he's a pimp. He's a pedophile. Anyways, don't get me going. Um, so this is all coming from, that's who this is coming from, okay? The Masons. That's why the war, of it, the, the Civil War was fought. It's because it, it went and effectively destroyed the Republic. The Republic is still there, but it's not being operated. The Second World War must be fomented. And this is in the mid-1800s, and they're predicting, and this is the stuff that actually happened. We all know what happened. The Second World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences between the fascists and the political Zionists. The war must be brought about so Nazism is destroyed and the political Zionism be strong enough to institute a sovereign state of Israel in Palestine. During the Second World War, international communism must be strong enough in order to balance Christendom, which would be then restrained and held in check until a time when we need it for the final social cataclysm. Okay, so this is this is what's going on, folks. That's the Second World War, and now they're building it up for World War III. The Third World War fomented, taking advantage of the differences caused by the Egyptian tour of the Illuminati, the war that Islam and political Zionism, Israel mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations divided, constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economic exhaustion. We shall unleash the nihilists, the atheists. We shall provoke the formidable social cataclysm and all its horror, savagery, most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization. And the multitude disillusioned with Christianity will receive the true light of the pure doctrine of Lucifer. Brought finally out in the public view, this will result from reactionary movement, which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. You know, well, I don't think it's going to work out the way he wants, but he's certainly they're working towards it, aren't they? I don't think it's going to work out the way he wants. There's there's a little bit of divine intervention going on, and um, and I don't think it's going to work out the way he wants. But having said that. The high office of the president has been used to foment a plot to destroy the America's freedom. And before I leave office, I must inform the citizen of his plight. President John Fitzgerald Kennedy, in a speech made to Columbia University on November 12, 1863, 10 days before his assassination. My history of the Jesuits is not eloquently written, but it is supported by unquestionable authorities and very particular and very horrible. There, the Jesuits' orders restoration in 1814 by Pope Pius VII is indeed a step towards darkness, cruelty, despotism, and death. I do not like the appearance of the Jesuit, if there was bought of men who merited eternal damnation on earth and in hell. It is the society of Ignatius de Loyola. And so this is what's happening, right? This is the Masons. This is the Vatican. The Roman cult is behind all these Masons, along with the, the crown. That's all coming from the Roman cult is really where it's coming from. Within 20 years, this country is going to rule the world. Kings and emperors will soon pass away, and the democracy of the United States will take their place. When the United States rules the world, the Catholic Church will rule the world. Nothing can stand against the church. This is uh, Roman Catholic Archbishop James E. Quigley, uh, Chicago Daily Tribune, May 5, 1903. Oh, and the Roman Conquest. 
It's 24th of September, 2015. And that red text there, uh, we're going to see what that says, but we'll start right here with this red text, and I'll, I got it on the next page, on the next slide. Roman Achaea military staff carried in battle by all Roman commands, planted on all conquered nations. And so it's pointing at this military staff right here. And then this text, devout Roman Catholic honorary degree from Jesuit Scranton University. And that's pointing at Biden. Okay, that's Biden back in 2015 when Obama was president. And then the third one, which is right here, pointing at these two fascists right here. Roman bundle of rods bound to a weapon symbolizing subservient under the rule of a single man. And there's the pimp. And then this last one, devout Roman Catholic trained by Jesuits installed the first Jesuit chaplain to the house. And it's pointing at Beener or Boner or whatever his name was. Congress is owned and operated by the Roman cult. On behalf of the Roman cult, Congress has been imposing military dictatorship on everybody in America. So that's who owns DC, okay, is the Roman cult. Matter of fact, well, we're going to talk a little bit about more about that. Justice is coming, you know. Obama and him are having a good old time. See, so yeah, every time their president gets elected, they have to go see the pimp. Well, I meant the pope. No, I meant the pimp. Uh, but he's not too happy when Trump there. I'll tell you, he's not very happy at all. <laughs> My new book is available, Trump, uh, and called Trump, A True American Patriot or Not. Um, this is the back of the book, and uh, I didn't write this part of it. Uh, Mike Blackwell actually asked me to write the book, and it took me about six weeks because all I did is I took a lawsuit and manipulated it and turned it into the book. Um, so it's 99% provable facts. Anyways, he hired a company to help us with that, and the company wrote this, and I think that they nailed it right here. It says, um, and Trump, a true American patriot, or not, Glenn Fern and Mike Blackwell uh, serve, uh, reveal the depths of corruption, deceit, and manipulation infesting our political system for hundreds of years, regardless of political affiliation. Read the hard evidence that exposes how our elected officials sold Americans into slavery. Understand the Founding Fathers' true intent when they formed our Republican form of government. Discover the influence of the satanic Roman cult on our politicians and political system. Does Donald Trump want to transfer power back to we the people? In Trump, you'll see the great battle that is upon us. And I think they nailed it right there, I'll tell you. I couldn't have said it better myself. You can order the book from Amazon.com or from my website. It's $40 plus shipping. I prefer you order the book from my website. Uh, Amazon does not provide autographed books. If you want it autographed, you're going to have to order it from my book, from my website. Um... Don't forget to let me know if you have something special you want the autograph to say. Do you want to know the origins of the deep state and who's behind it? Do you want to know why it's called the Trump administration? It's all tied to the Roman cult, folks. Do you want to know what an administration is? Do you want to know how Trump came to be president? Do you want to know who owns Congress? The Roman cult owns Congress. Um, do you want to know why they're called law enforcement officers? They're enforcing the martial law. Do you want to know how you have become a slave? Do you want to know what the root cause of the War of Independence was? It's the same thing that's going on right now. you want to know why every president goes to visit the pimp? Well, I meant the Pope. No, I meant the pimp. On their first international trip, it's in the book. So I already said that Mike Blackwell asked me to write the book. Um, but uh, the thing to understand is that it's 99% provable facts or 95%. It's a little bit of opinion. Um, Trump was invited to run, okay? So I think, my opinion, I think that the entire Trump administration's a giant military psyop. But I got no proof, but that's what I think. Um, Jerome Corsi is a guy that lives up in the Northeast. He's written a bunch of books. He's got a website, a YouTube channel. Anyways, there's a YouTube video where Jerome Corsi says that in 2015, five generals came to see him, and they said they were going to overthrow Obama. And he said, you can do that if you want, but you might want to go talk to Donald Trump first. And three months later, he gets a phone call. They decided not to overthrow Obama because Donald Trump had agreed to run for president. So 
my opinion, another one of my opinions, is that all of these billionaires, they get approached by the New World Order crowd and they get told that they're going to go along with the program or they're going to turn up dead. And I think that Howard Hughes was approached, although he might not have been. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. But I think that Trump was. Um, so Trump really knows the threats that he's being exposed to. Um, there was a helicopter crash in 1984, one of Trump's helicopters. Um, and I happen to know a little bit about helicopters because I started out working on helicopters in 1976. And um, the... Um, uh, that helicopter crash is very unusual. It, uh, it crashed because the blades came off. I've never, ever, ever heard of a helicopter crash because the blades come off. You know, they come off, they crash because maybe a tail rotor dry shaft bearing seizes up and the uh, helicopter starts to spin. I mean, any number of things, but not the blades coming off. They might, you know, in Vietnam, believe it or not, they had helicopters that had four feet shot off the blades and those suckers were still flying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think about it. If you're getting shot at, you're going to fly that sucker, even if you got a bad vibration. <laughs> you're going to get the heck out of there. <laughs> Anyways, David Wilcock, I don't know how many of you have heard of him, but he's got a YouTube channel, uh, got a website called Divine Cosmos. On his, there's a YouTube video where he says that Howard Hughes was blackballed after the end of World War II. And couldn't get any defense contracts. And Howard Hughes, you know, he's he's like pretty uh, pretty influential guy. Had a lot of money, billionaire. And so he went and hired some ladies to go and sleep with the military industrial complex types, and find out from pillow talk what was going on. And that's when he found out they were planning on killing off 90% of us and doing a global plantation thing like what they're doing right now. And so he had actually published a set of volumes and books on how to defeat the whole thing. And Kennedy was actually implementing it. Remember, Kennedy circulated $6 billion of the U.S. Treasury notes. He's telling them, you're done. And so they killed Kennedy. They killed his brother. They killed all sorts of other people. And so... I think that's why Howard Hughes was hiding out, because he figured he was next. And so, um, anyways, that's my opinion. Um, in reality, they're not after me. They're after you. I'm just in the way. I think that's the case. And there's been some further developments since I wrote the book, too. I'm giving you your country back from the criminal psychopaths who stole it from you, and half of you don't even know it yet. And I think I think he's right. I think, you know, I, you know, I guess we'll see, but, and this is what we're going to, we're going to talk about this more for sure right now, about 18 months before Trump's first indictment, I got an email that said he'd be indicted and don't worry, it's all part of the show. Just before the first indictment, Trump came out and said, I am your retribution. <laughs> he was egging them. He was making them do something. Just before the most recent indictment, Trump started talking about public hangings. <laughs> the deep state is in a complete panic mode. Biden does not have the 747. They're in panic mode. And and they're grabbing at straws trying to do anything because they know they're going to get their necks stretched. Okay, they're involved in treason. And, and, and uh, if Trump gets into office, they're going to get their necks stretched. Um, Biden, I can tell you that Biden does not have the 747. Um, that that airplane where he tripped on the stairs, going up the stairs, um, the the air stairs, um, I, that wasn't the 747. That was a 787. Okay, so I think Trump has the 747. The White House is vacant. There's YouTube videos of people that go to the White House and and there's nobody there. The grass is all overgrown. Nobody's mowing the grass. Uh, there's half of D.C. is vacant, and uh, and I think that what I heard, what I heard is, I don't know how many of you remember um, that there was, um, uh, a, uh, there was the Dominion voting machines were transmitting their data through an Italian satellite overseas, and that was owned by an Italian defense contractor and leased to the Vatican. And... I don't know if you remember the news at that time that was in November of 2019. Um, in the news, there was a big shakeup in the Italian government. There was uh, this defense contractor had a big shakeup. There was some people that were charged with felonies. 
And um, and uh, um, I heard, now this is just a rumor now, I heard that we seized like 250-some, depending on who you talk to or what you, who you hear it from. It's 250 airplane loads of gold from the Vatican. And there's other people that say it was like 650 airplane loads of gold. I don't know. I've heard that Fort Knox is busting at the seams, and there's three other military installations that are busting at the seams. You know, Austin, or uh, Texas, has a gold depository, and I tend to wonder if some of that gold is down there because that gold depository, if you want to make a deposit into that gold depository, you got to mail it to them. You can't physically go there. I mean, that's like really high security. I've been to other places, vaults, and I've never... They've never done that kind of stuff where you can't go there. I tend to wonder if it's because of all they got a bunch of gold there that's U.S. government gold. And, and uh, so anyways, I've heard that they're looking for a new uh, capital location. They were looking in Missouri. I've heard Scallion actually said that the new capital will be in Denver. So we'll see. Scallion is a guy that uh, got these visions back in, in the 90s. Um, so we'll see. You know, that's all I can say. These are all rumors. I have no idea. Um, some of it's rumors. Well, it's all hearsay. It's all certainly hearsay. Uh, but so I think that I think that um, that uh, there's some stuff going on. I've you know, um, you know, you just don't know. And then this is what he came out with just before uh, they got the last indictment for those. Not the last indictment. This this. Um, the last indictment, he was talking about uh, hangings. This is before the first indictment, just before the first indictment. He said, for those of you who have been wronged and betrayed, I am your retribution. <laughs> so, I mean, one thing that uh, he's got his own private security, doesn't trust the Secret Service, and I don't blame him. He shouldn't trust the Secret Service. Um, there's a hanging tree. This is obviously just a painting or a drawing of some sort. But I think that we might see this kind of stuff, you know. I um, some of them certainly deserve it. Some of these judges, and and uh, they they certainly would deserve it, you know. And I'd be, you know, I always say I'd like to hear that little snap. <laughs> but at any rate, um, so we'll see. You know, that's all I can say. Um, I think there's going to be hangings. I think that there's it's going to get really really ugly here pretty soon. So you need to be prepared. You need to practice preparedness, have food, have stored things. And I would, you know, I am, I've got land out in the country and I'm planning on being on that land. Um, um, you know, I guess we'll see right now. I, I don't have much, but I've heard, well, I have always had a feeling that just before the end, I'd come into more money and I'd never know what to do with. So we'll see, you know, we'll see. Uh, if I do, I'm going to be heading for the hills, I'll tell you. I, well, I want to build a place of refuge for other people to gather that like-minded, that uh, are looking for a place to go, that uh, I've been impoverished by the system. You know, that's what I'd like to do. But anyway, so we'll see. Um, so I think that we're going to see something similar to this, you know. Um, you know, there's, there's just, it's going to really get ugly. It's going to get really, really ugly here pretty soon. Um, so this is actually taken from the Soldier's Training Manual, is published by the War Department, November 30, November 30th, 1928, and it was ordered by Roosevelt destroyed. But uh, so the question is, is whether we have a democracy? A democracy is communist, okay? First of all, and they keep telling us we have a democracy. That's why I say it's District of Columbia, and the District of Columbia is communist, okay? Uh, is a government of the masses, authority derived through mass meeting or any form of uh, direct expression, results in mobocracy, attitude towards property is communistic, negating property rights, attitude towards law is that the will of the majority shall regulate, whether it be based upon deliberation or government by passion, prejudice, and impulses without restraint or regard to consequences. Results in demagogism, license, agitation, discontent, and anarchy. So we're seeing a lot of that stuff going on. They keep telling us we're in democracy. I think that's those, those are some of the people that need to get their necks stretched, is uh, the people that are telling us that, like uh, George Bush and Clinton and uh, Obama. Anyways, authority, republic. 
Authorities derived through the election of the people by their public officials, best fitted to represent them. Attitude towards property is respect for laws and individual rights and a sensible economic procedure. Attitude towards laws, administration of justice uh, in accordance with fixed principles and established evidence with a strict regard to consequences. A large number of citizens, a greater number of citizens and extent of territory may be brought by its compass avoids the dangerous extreme of tyranny and mobocracy, results in statement, statesmanship, liberty, reason, justice, contentment, and progress. And so that's a republic. That's taken from the Soldier's Training Manual and published by the War Department, November 30th, 1928. And so um, we want a, demo a republic. We've got a democracy. And so we need to do something about it. All elections are corporate in the District of Columbia. The District of Columbia is communist. The Constitution is the absolute best thing that our fathers put into place because they understood what these Satanists are up to, and they will never, ever admit that the Constitution doesn't apply, so you stand your ground with the constitutional stuff, and and they'll, they'll cave in because they'll never, ever, ever admit anything. And, and they have an oath of office. They still have that oath of office. Do not bring up anything about the birth certificate or call a judge a banker. I can't tell you. I've run into people that did that. And he is a banker. There's no doubt about it. But when you go and make those arguments, it puts you into the Commerce Clause. Okay? That's communism. I like the Child of Standing. And uh, a procedure on uh, on the training video for Child of Standing is on my exclusive channel on HowTube.com. And I'm going to be uploading some uh, uh, videos on, on mandamuses here pretty soon, too. A child sustaining is the best way because it's a one-pager and it, it nips it in the bud. Okay? Where's your authority to talk to me as a man? Or a child's jurisdiction, either one. But the child's jurisdiction is like 35 pages. Okay? And so I like the child sustaining. It's like one page. <laughs> The real solution is to stay out of the Communist di District of Columbia. That's really the solution. Why do you think they keep telling you it's a democracy? Hello, the lights are on. Is anybody home? We need to revitalize the militia of the several states. The militia of the several states is absolutely critical to a Republican form of government, according to Edwin Vieira. And he's a pretty smart guy. Trump is one man. It cannot come from just one man. We need to support him, and the way we do that is we step up and we start start getting involved in our militia. And, and, and that's a way of letting him know, you know, he was given an opportunity to sign the Insurrection Act. This is another hearsay that I heard, okay, this is hearsay, that, that um, Sidney Powell, and, and you might remember election night, that uh, they talked about how how uh, there was a stolen election, and um, Sidney Powell was going to come back the next day and uh, prepare the Insurrection Act for Donald Trump to sign. And um, when she got back, um, her pass had been revoked by Mark Meadows, and everybody called Mark Meadows a traitor. But what I'm hearing, okay, this is hearsay again, is that overnight. Trump held a lot of meetings in the middle of the night, and he's a bit of a night owl, I guess. But anyways, a bunch of generals came to see him, and they told him that if he, he was perfectly able to sign the Insurrection Act, but if he did, that within six months there'd be a civil war, and that they had gamed out all sorts of civil war scenarios, and the republic does not survive. And Trump decided not to sign the Insurrection Act. He needed to wake up the people. And he's certainly been doing that. And so that's, again, what he's saying is he needs the people behind him. So we need to let him know that we're there for him. And, and some people say that Trump is just another tool of the, of the deep state and all that. Maybe he is. But we still need to get off our backside. The republic has got to be we the people. It's not one man. Anyways, that's the end of this video. And D.C. elections 
the, all these elections are corporate elections. They're in the District of Columbia. And, and we need to, what happened to the idea that landowners were automatically electors? You know, that's because of the martial law. We need to have law again. Republic, we need our republic. And, and so anyways, we're going to be doing more videos about the militia. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.